Hello and welcome to Here Comes the Bride, The Church Begins. It is a, our look at the book of Acts and we are just doing a brief devotional as we walk through the book of Acts. And I am Jim DeVore, the pastor of Cornerstone Church of Little Rock in California. And we are in Acts chapter 9. Wow, what a chapter. The conversion of Saul to Paul. And so Acts chapter 9, the conversion of Saul to Paul, beginning in verse 1. Let's go ahead and begin this. But Saul, so what happened in verse 8, just as a quick reminder, okay? At verse 8, verses 1 through 3 are about Saul, and he begins his rampage, and he's dragging. Verse 3, Saul was ravaging the church and entering house after house. He dragged off men and women and committed them to prison. Pause, okay? Verse 4 to the end of chapter 8 is about Philip and Philip's ministry. So we get all excited about what God's doing through Philip, but then... But then Luke brings us quickly back to earth, Luke being the writer of the book of Acts, and says, But Saul, chapter 9, verse 1, But Saul, still breathing threats and murders against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, Damascus so that he may be, that if he found any, okay, we're just going to start this over again, ready? Here we go. But Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any belonging to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. So what's Saul asking for? He's already been given permission in Jerusalem to go into the various synagogues. If he finds believers in the way, meaning the way of Jesus, that's what they called those. Remember, okay, remember originally the Jews allowed the followers of Jesus to kind of congregate in the temples and in the synagogues, they kind of treated them as a as a, a different group of Jewish believers. And it's not very long, because when these different group of Jewish believers, kind of this sect or this group, okay, because you had your your sect of the Pharisees and your sect of the Sadducees and your Herodians and all those things. So they kind of went, oh, these are the sects of the followers of Jesus, okay? But when they realized that they were still continuing to proclaim Jesus as the way and as the Messiah and as the risen Lord, they were like, no, no, you can't do that. You can't do that because that stands against everything we believe and you're doing the same thing he did. You're trying to thrust us from power. And so they began to want to root them out. Okay, they called them blasphemers and uh, they started chasing them down. So Saul thinks he's doing the right thing. He thinks he's honoring God by getting rid of these people who are calling Jesus God. That's blasphemy as far as he's concerned. Because you can't call someone else God who's not God. Okay, so he becomes well liked in the Jerusalem, uh, and along the Jerusalem, uh, Jerusalem Jews, and because he's chasing out all of the followers of Jesus. So he decides he's going to spread his influence, and he wants to go to Damascus, a nearby town, and enter those synagogues and find out if there's any followers of the way there, and drag them out as well, and have them arrested and killed, and so so forth and so on. So, so he gets it. Um, so Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest, asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any belonging to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now, as he went on his way, he approached Damascus. So he's almost there, get, getting ready to do his duty, looking for those believers. He's going to wonder if the believers just take off running. Surely they've heard. Well, they've, they've moved in. They've set down roots. I mean, he's probably not announcing his presence, but they've run, but they haven't run that far, and they are believing. Um, they don't realize how great the persecution is in Jerusalem. Nobody got a phone call. Nobody got an email. Everything's being spread by word of mouth. Okay. As he was on his way, he approached Damascus, and suddenly a light from heaven shone around him, and falling to the ground, he heard a voice saying to him, so whether he was walking and fell to the ground, riding a horse and fell to the ground, the light around him was so bright and alarming that he fell down. And a voice said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? So he hears a voice that says, why are you persecuting me? And he said, so Saul said, who are you, Lord? He knows it's God speaking to him. Okay? But he asks so that God will identify himself. Who are you, Lord? You are God. You are speaking to me. What do you mean I'm persecuting you? Who are you? Because surely I'm not persecuting you, Jehovah God. Okay? That's kind of his thinking, his response. Who are you, Lord? And he said, the Lord said, 
I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Wow. Okay, let's break this down. Hold on a minute. Saul is not physically persecuting Jesus, or at least that's what he thinks, okay? He's physically persecuting the followers of Jesus. He's trying to eradicate what he believes to be a blasphemous, false sect that's not proclaiming Jehovah God as truly God, okay? But really what Saul's doing is he's persecuting Jesus because he doesn't himself want to believe that Jesus is God. So he shows his lack of belief of Jesus as God by, by making a big deal out of those who do believe and pointing fingers at them and, and going after them and attacking them. But what he's really attacking is his refusal to believe that Jesus is God. So the next time somebody attacks you for your faith, they're not attacking you. They're attacking Jesus because they're refusing to acknowledge that Jesus is God. And so by attacking you, they're hoping to silence you so they don't have to be continually confronted with the truth. It's like deciding to hurt, maim, kill off anybody that agrees one plus one is two unless they be quiet. It's not like you ever deny that one plus one is two. You're just done hearing it. You just don't want to accept it and receive it. That's what's happening here. People who are against Jesus Christ are against the historical fact that he lived on earth he died on the cross, and he rose from the dead and ascended to the Father. They're, they're against a historical fact just as much as they would have to be against 1 plus 1 equaling 2. So they attack the followers and the believers and the teachers and the preachers for saying what they say, trying to silence them, when really what they're trying to silence is the voice of God in their life telling them that Jesus Christ is Lord. So Saul says to the voice, Who are you, Lord? The voice responds, He said, which we know is the Lord, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. Six, but rise and enter the city and you will be told what you are to do. So he doesn't even give Saul a chance to enter. He says, okay, if you're, if you're going to make a turn here, then you're going to go ahead and, and immediately show obedience to me. He doesn't even allow Saul to have a conversation here. Okay. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, hearing the voice, but seeing no one. So they heard the voice. But they look around, they don't see anybody. So they know this voice is coming from somewhere they don't know where. Okay? It's the voice of God. All right? Saul rose from the ground, and although his eyes were open, he saw nothing. Wide open eyes, he could see nothing. Okay? So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And for three days, he was without sight and neither ate nor drank. So what did God say? Rise into the city, and you will be told what you are to do. So Saul rises, he goes into the city, he can't see, he doesn't eat, he doesn't drink for three days. He's waiting to be told what to do. All right, well, we're actually just going to stop there, okay, because it's like two stories of two different people who are going to respond to the teaching of God with two totally different things going on. So let's just focus on Saul. Let's ask our questions, okay? Question number one, what do we learn of God and his eternal plan? God will use anybody. He cares for everybody. He cares even for this man who's persecuting his own spiritual children, God's children. Okay? He is going to go after this man to save him. He cares about Saul, the murdering, killing, arresting man of Tarsus. Okay? He cares about him as an individual. And so he appears to him, identifies himself who he is, so that Saul will get saved, okay? What do we see of God working through the church? Well, we're, we're going to end up seeing him taking this man who is against the church, going to become a man who's for the church. We don't know that yet, but we know it's coming. What do we learn of the individual? Is that when the obstinate person chooses to obey, he's going to obey little steps at a time, but he's going to obey. And that's all God tells Saul to do. Hey, you're persecuting me, Jesus? So get up and go to the city and wait for the next order. If you really believe, then you're going to stop what you're doing. So for three days, at least he stops. And you're going to wait for obedience. Okay? If, if someone who's been just rat, just completely and totally against Christ, if you want them to come to Christ and they actually listen to you and pray with you, you will know if they've come to Christ. Not by their immediate understanding of all the things of God, but of various areas in their life where they've turned around and gone the other direction by things that they've stopped willingly and on their own because the Holy Spirit of God will make changes in their life. 
Okay, so the first part of the story is an anti-believer, a destroyer, a destructor, who begins to obey God. Okay, next devotional, we're going to take a look at a believer who has to obey God and do his own great peril. Hang on to that for our next devotional on Here Comes the Pride, The Church Begins. <laughs>